Three days uh, later, there was a funeral, which turned out to be the largest funeral in 20th century, uh, because everybody came. Uh, when I say everybody, I mean from Margaret Thatcher, German Chancellor, head of the Soviet Union, you know, uh, journalists were sent from countries uh, as obscure as uh, Monaco and uh, Togo, you know, let alone uh, bigger countries, you know, Italian president cried, Saddam Hussein was there, you know, uh, Julius Nyerere uh, of uh, uh, Tanzania cried. Zambian president even made a poem. Well, he was obviously very, very good at not public public relation, but inter interpersonal relationship because he seemed like he had um, many friends, many political friends, and well, movie star friends. He he must have been. He must. Uh, it must have some some kind of good personality or attractive one. So I think that is the main reason that he had so many people attending his funeral because it's not only the political uh, part that matters because you see that not all of the politi politicians have those kind of funerals. So it must have something more than that. So I think it was for his maybe enjoyable personality or something. And he must have done at least some things right because there seems to be this respect, this interest in him, even though perhaps he did some things which were negative. He must have been some very strong personality and some very interesting person and very clever of what, because of all he did, all that um, political system that he invented, being a communist and at the same time uh, receive some influence from the West and I think he made people in his country to live much better than we <laughs> in my country and the other from the Soviet bloc. Uh, Tito became leader of Yugoslavia in 1945. Uh, he already had his first meeting with the uh, president uh, of British government in 44, Churchill. And then he met Stalin, and uh, both meetings were very important for the international recognition of Yugoslavia, because uh, uh, although Stalin officially asked Tito for the permission to enter with the Soviet troops to uh, the eastern part of Yugoslavia, they stayed there for a brief time, helped to liberate Belgrade, it was internationally important, because he was recognized by, the Sta by Stalin as uh, as a leader of Yugoslavia that was uh, in founding, actually, uh, because the Yugoslav government in exile existed in, in London, or was in London. Ruler number one, the most, uh, the closest one you can get to Stalin until 1948, 49. Then they split. Yugoslavia split with the Soviets, remaining communist, but not being part of uh, the Russian, uh, Russian world. And that was something that could exist only uh, in a system or period that was called uh, Cold War. Uh, Yugoslavia used its position to have its uh, bread buttered from both sides. Uh, so it remained communist with single party uh, system and regime but it was attached to the West in many uh, aspects, you know. Uh, when Yugoslavia built its first nuclear power plant in uh, two republics, Slovenia and Croatia built it, uh, it was with Westinghouse uh, technology, Western technology. When television came, television uh, in Zagreb, uh, which was established in 1957, the first one in southeastern Europe, it was with Grunding, German uh, technology. Uh, Borders were open from the beginning of the 60s, uh, 100%. Uh, you could buy foreign press and watch Western uh, movies and television in Yugoslavia. That was unthinkable for all other parties that were communist. Uh, if you are a friend with the Americans, you would immediately have 
enemies on the other side, the Soviet bloc. If you are friends with the Soviets, you have immediately enemies from the Western bloc. What he cleverly did was position himself between these two blocs, so that both blocs were trying to fight for his goodwill and assistance. And also he became, because of that clever positioning between two powerful blocs, he became the leader of the non-aligned movement, uh, countries who did not want to choose. He showed the world that, it, that not the whole world needed to be divided in either East or West, that there could be this movement of neutrality between this great conflict between the superpowers. When Stalin wanted to, uh, to, to, to make a solid bloc of the socialist countries, you know, he probably uh, wanted to get rid of Tito uh, as too independent and then to show to the rest, you know, this might be your destiny. Uh, but when Tito did not uh, fall down, you know, and when he showed himself as ruthless enough to create a special concentration camp uh, for the Stalinists of Yugoslavia, in some parts of Yugoslavia, like Montenegro, for instance, uh, uh, more than half of communists were pro-Stalin. You know, they all finished on, on Goli Otok. Goli means bear, island, uh, in northern part of the Adriatic. That was an island uh, created for the Stalinists, you know, a concentration camp. We cannot deny uh, that uh, his uh, methods were not always nice even not always accept acceptable, but uh, the results, the goals he had achieved are amazing. I think, um, yeah, you break eggs to, to make omelets, but, well, in this case, these are people and li lives of the people, but, um, you know, this is a cruel world. He had the results, a great results. His people love him. Not, not, it's not just like this uh, uh, brainwashed love like some leaders have. Like, uh, I think I would name Stalin and uh, that North Korean funny guy. And, uh, well, uh, this, this is a real love. He wasn't a typical dictator. He was very often described as a bon vivant. Uh, although I'm not sure that he was bon vivant because he had uh, very much of Austro-Hungarian uh, work ethics. You know, he was getting up very early. Uh, he was very pedantic in that sense, but enjoyed when uh, Richard Burton played him in uh, a famous movie, Sutiska, you know, when uh, he spent three days with uh, uh, Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor on the Briuli Islands, when, uh, you know, Sophia Loren was coming to, to see him, and so on and so on. Tito was a, a capable organizer. Uh, some people say that uh, his nickname, Tito, which was actually a relatively common name in his part of Croatia, comes from you do this, you do, you do this, you do this, you know, Tito, 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 you know. Uh, that, be, that became his nickname and uh, he was known as Tito ever, ever since. When he was young, he was asked, well, what would you like to be one day? He said, a waiter. And why waiter? Because waiter is dressed very nicely, you know, white shirt and so on. So love for nice clothes remained ever since. You know, he was the best dressed statesman uh, in Europe, uh, proclaimed by Life magazine, I think. Before World War One and World War Two, Briuni, uh, part of Italy, in between two world wars, was uh, one of the most exclusive uh, places of uh, tourism. The, the poshest of the posh were, were coming there. After the war, uh, Tito decided to organize his residence uh, there, and Briuni Islands were de facto the second capital of Yugoslavia for most of the time, especially in the last years of his life, because he would live there for more than six months. And you will see why 
when you when you come there. I understand why Tito chose it to be his residency. It's very beautiful. The water is amazing. There are many ancient ancient buildings, ruins, and all those stuff. It's kind of a paradise for me because no vehicles, motor vehicles are allowed there. Only golf cars, these electrical cars and bicycles or walking. More than exclusive when it comes to nature and you will see why. So uh, there are still animals that were given to him by leaders of the third world countries and uh, he was, he considered himself a leader of the third non-aligned. So. Uh, you will see probably uh, elephants uh, given by Indira Gandhi. The elephant looked really a sad elephant. I think they have to remove him from there and drive him to some zoo where uh, there are other elephants because the, the cage there is too small for that elephant and he is alone. It's the female elephant from Indira Gandhi. The male elephant died last year or maybe two years ago, and I don't think they have to keep it there. The more I know of him, the more I respect him. He, I would call him more like a good old-fashioned king. The king that cares for, for his people, the king, the king that um, is also smart enough to um, cooperate with other uh, like countries and kingdoms, whatever. I think the main reason why Tito uh, has become less and less popular in former countries of Yugoslavia is the rise of nationalism. Because he's the normal enemy of nationalists because his legacy and life work was keeping these countries together. His idea of brotherhood and unity of different republics. We're all equal, we're all in the same boat. Nationalists don't think that way. They think our country is special, we want to control everything about our country, we don't want to share our resources with other countries that do not share our culture, do not share our language. Majority of people were deeply shocked and moved. Of course, if you ask them at the beginning of the 90s or from the beginning of the 90s onwards, then the answer is different. But. Uh, uh, unfortunately for them, so many uh, and even so many celebrities were asked for their opinion and they wrote something, you know. So it's interesting to compare what those people were telling in 1980 and in 1990s. Uh, but then again, you know, uh, it's understandable. I guess it's in the human nature. The older generations uh, remember the sacrifices Tito had made before he became president. The later generations mainly remember the Tito of the late 60s and the, the 70s, which is, of course, he's a dictator, and when you go to Briuni, you see it emanates luxury, which is in a big contrast with uh, communist uh, ideology. People are quick to forget, and we always look at history from our point of view backwards. So what happened later colors our view of what happened before. So now people more quickly remember Tito the dictator, not Tito the liberator. And I think that's the reason why his, the memory of his legacy has been changing and people have started to deny how, how loved he actually was in this country.